The Menace Tech Show. Welcome to the Metis Tech Show, a show for HVAC professionals by HVAC professionals. The Metis Tech Show. Be true, be true. I don't care what you say, Juan. No matter what, I hate it. I don't like it. It's disgusting. I don't care what you put it on. I don't understand. I love it. It tastes so good. I put it on meats. I put it in salads. I put it on sandwiches. I love mixing it with jelly oh, on God. rye bread, rye toast. Oh, I'm getting sick. Oh, listen, that listen, is listen, taste on, overload. Just in case you guys don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about blue cheese. Blue cheese is horrible. It is awesome. You, I mean, how about going gone so? Oh, it's the same thing. It's just worse. No. It, yes, it, yes, it is. Have you ever tasted goat cheese? <sighs> it's awesome. You need to taste some goat cheese. Is goat cheese blue cheese? No. Okay, then we're, we're not talking about goat cheese here. Just giving you something. Well, let, me tell, let me tell you a story. The wife sees a block of Romano cheese in the refrigerator. She sees a little tiny blue on it. And she throws the whole block out, nine ten dollars worth of worth of Romano cheese, and then she'll put blue cheese. And I don't understand. That's mold. It's the same thing. I throw that out. I get in trouble. <laughs> That's right, because she loves blue cheese. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the Metis Tech Show. What's our topic today? One today we're going to talk about communication breakdown. What communication uh, breakdown? I'm sorry. What'd you say? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the there topic. you go. Communication breakdown. Great topic. So where, when we're dealing with a communication breakdown issue on a system, where should we start? Well, I think any time we start with a piece of equipment on a startup or a service call, probably the first thing we're looking at L1, L2, looking for right. voltage there. I'm looking for it within our range, uh, 187 to 253 uh, volts. You know, make sure it's within that range. All right. And then what is the most important wire in the whole system? Uh, probably S3. Probably S3 is our okay. communication. On the, so let's think of it on the supply side. What is the most important? What typically comes with L1 and L2? Ground, right. obviously. Ground. I mean, the, the system needs a proper ground for it to work properly, right? Absolutely. And being from the Northeast, um, way before Mitsubishi, uh, gas furnaces, grounds, you, you lose everything sometimes. So we've confirmed L1 and L2. We've got good voltages between the range. Mm -hmm. What's our next go-to? Uh, I'm definitely going to go right next to it. It all takes a few seconds, S1, S2. Make sure that's somewhere in the same range. Give or take a few volts, then L1, L2. And then uh, we're going to switch our meter over to DC, go S2 to S3. And that's where we're looking for that bouncing voltage uh, along that. And t tell, tell us how that works. Yeah, that's that's uh, the, the signal is 12 to 24. Sometimes it could be 8 on the low side. It could be 30 on the high side. It all depends on our incoming voltage. Now, the way that that fluctuation or bouncing voltage works is when you first power up. I mean, typically, what powers the indoor unit? The outdoor unit. Sure. Right? So you, that's where S1 and S2 comes in. So when you first power up the outdoor unit, immediately 24 volts DC is sent from the outdoor unit to the indoor unit through S2 and S3. So once the indoor unit sees it, sees that 24 volts DC signal, and everything is okay, it sends the indoor unit, or the indoor, indoor board specifically, sends the 12 volts DC signal back to the outdoor unit, telling it, hey, I see you, I'm connected, let's run. Yes. And so that's that fluctuation, 12 to 24 DC volts that we talk about. And that actually brought us to a, a previous podcast where we – if we had individual switches for the units, as far as power switches, service switches, uh, sequence of operations is important. Then you start up the indoor unit first, um, because then it would be, you know, that, that that signal would come from the outdoor unit, and it, it wouldn't hear anything. So it would say, I have a problem here. But that was in the previous podcast, if you all remember. So new installations, you know, that's always a challenge. Uh, even though it's a one-to-one, -one, what we're talking about, uh, it's, it's, it's very easy to cross those wires. I mean, typically we use color-coded wires, but uh, once again, two people doing it, you know, a job together, somebody's wiring the inside, somebody's wiring the outside, you can easily cross one of those. And that, that comes in. That comes in as service calls on new installations. And that happens a lot when you've got two guys because, you know, companies expect installers to install a one-to-one 
in four hours. Yeah, and show up here at a time. So do you have, you've got an installer inside, an installer outside. They're not communicating. It, typically, that's going to create a communication breakdown because they're going to cross the wires, specifically yeah. S2 and S3. So the other thing that can happen is, you know, while you're pulling your wires or whatever you're doing, um, you know, not paying attention to it, you could, like, you know, maybe chafe the wire, nick the wire, um, and, and you could cause a short. So that wire could be shorted to each other or uh, S3 could be shorted to ground. So it's another concern you should take care of. And most of the situation, um, you know, it's typically a short run. You're following at least, you know, my, you know, what I'm used to doing is following that uh, control wiring with the pipe. So as I'm running the pipe, I'm doing the same thing. I, I, I'm running the wire at the same time. And also uh, what we need to understand as technicians Typically, what does DC positive is always looking for? It's looking for its favorite friend ground. Absolutely. So if S3 is shorted to ground, what happens to the signal? Oh, the signal's lost. The signal's lost. Zero. So you're going to have no a communication, communication breakdown right off the bat. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why we always say S3 should always be a solid wire from the outdoor unit to the indoor unit, or we also call it a home run. Yeah, from beginning to end. Right. No wire nuts, no solderless connectors, no splices, just a solid wire going from the outdoor unit S3 to the indoor unit S3. That is, and, and considering that the wire size is very important here too. Now, just in case, just in case you're required or you choose to put in a service switch, we typically look at a three-pole arcless service switch. So in that case, you are, guess what? You are breaking S, S3 at that point, but where it's an arcless service switch, you're not going to have a communication problem because of that switch. So that is the exception. And by the way, Mitsubishi sells those type of switches, and you can find it in MyLink Drive. Mm -hmm. It's That's listed what they there with a part uh, number. I believe now everything, the way uh, MyLink Drive is set up, uh, I know that back in the old days you had very little things uh, displayed when you went right to the piece of equipment. Now you probably have 20, 15, 20 different things, accessories that goes along with that piece of equipment. Right. So we've covered cross-wiring. Uh, on S2 and S3, we've covered shorted S3 wire. We've covered having a solid wire from the outdoor unit to the indoor unit with no wire nuts, no solderless connectors. And we've confirmed the wire size. What else should we be uh, looking for as far as communication breakdown? Well, you could look for incoming voltage, being, whether it's being low or possibly being high. I, I'm from the Florida area now. I teach down in Orlando, and it is not uncommon at all, at all, to have 248 to 253 volts down there. It's very common. Right. And then if, because if the incoming voltage is too low, that's going to be, that's going to create a low DC signal. Therefore, it's not going to create that 12 to 24 volts DC fluctuating signal that we need for the system to communicate properly. So it's going to generate a communication error. The as same well, yep. example is on the high side. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget, I was dealing with, um, with a water source heat pump that it had 256 volts coming into the home. Now, how, how is that possible? Well, I went immediately. The, the, everything inside the circuit boards were chattering. The relays in it were not making because of that high voltage. So I immediately went to the breaker panel, and I checked incoming voltage to the house. Sure enough, 256. And we have no control over that, but no. they're, they're, those situations happen all the time. Absolutely. You know? So we need to be aware of those situations. And the only ones that the homeowner can call is the electrical company. What happened in this one scenario that I'm talking of uh, about is uh, one of the transformers had failed. Yeah. So it was over, it was sending a higher than normal signal. Yeah. In my whole career, I've always seen brownouts, things being close to a brownout, especially up in the New England area. Um, so those situations are very common in at, at certain times of the year. Right. And when we're running through a high voltage condition, that really wears those circuit boards out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can cause them to fail. So what else What else can we need to be looking well, for I think, in new installations? I think you definitely have to look at how if somebody's adding a, uh, a condensate pump of some sort, you take a look at how that's wired and how the safety switch on that condensate pump is wired, what it's wired to. So, you know, I've dealt, unless they have changed recently, uh, but as far as a year ago, I was reading the installation instructions of a third-party condensate pump, and the installation instructions was saying to cut 
or to break S3. What do you think about that? Oh, I think that's a bad idea. Absolutely. What does uh, we say to to interrupt well, well, I, S1? I let it just says to, to, to cut S1. Right. Yeah. So regardless of what the installation instructions on the condensate pump says, we want you to break S1. And we have one that's going on with that is that if we break S3 uh, through the um, uh, backup switch on the condensate pump, y- you could have a communication error. Uh, on the controller or a flash code. And so now you're looking for a communication error, checking all this stuff, and it's the condensate pump. And it's now, you you know, it cleared itself up. Let's say the condensate pump drained a little bit. You know, three or four hours later, especially in Florida, we're going to get a lot of condensation. You're right back there with the same problem. So now you get, you know, you're back on a follow-up on a service call. So, you know, be aware of that. It's in our literature. Right. I know another thing that we tend to take for granted is loose connections. Right. We need to make sure that all our connections are tight. Uh, we need to be careful how we strip that wire, uh, not to, uh, I mean, to use um, wire strippers instead of using side cutters, because how many of the strands are cut? Absolutely, because if, if there's 22 strands of wire in there, whatever the number is, you cut off. Uh, I'll, do, I'll do math better for one here. Thank you, thank you. Uh, one, one needs math. Let's just say, for instance, it's 10 strands, and you cut off three. Wow, what's the big deal? Well, if you break it down into percentages, you just took 30% of the wire out of that circuit. Yep. So, And it's the other thing, too, is like on your wire strippers, I go up the units, and I'll see a half an inch to five-eighths of an inch of wire stripped. And it's just too much exposed because that, uh, if we talk about um, existing situations, I'll bring this one up real quick, what I'm talking about now. But uh, right on your strippers is a gauge. Uh, I'll admit it took me a few years to say, what is that measurement on my wire strippers for? And it's it's for the, the length of the wire that should, the casing that should be stripped off of that. Right. So we need to be very careful when we step wire. Uh, also, when you cut your your outside uh, jacket uh, that contains the three conductors. You need to be careful, especially when you're using a box cutter or a uh, or a side cutter, that you don't nick the internal wires because eventually they can short together and yeah, that will yeah. create problems. Yeah, absolutely, as well. absolutely. So we pretty much covered um, everything that we may find on a new installation. So now let's move on to existing installation, Roland. Okay, so one that's been running for a while with no problems, right. and then something occurs. Okay, all right, let's go for it. All right, so what is the first thing we want to look at on yep. a communication breakdown in, a, in an existing installation? Well, if I'm looking at something that's been installed for a while, I'm probably going to just start to see, look at my switches, look at my float switches, um, you know, see if something's open in that area. So so it, it may not be a, a problem, but just something that happened as a warning, such as it's not draining or, or, or something along the lines of that. So I'm going to look at whatever float switches I have to make sure that they're closed. All right. Also, you know, what if we have again wrong incoming voltage mm-hmm. well, because mm-hmm. we may have had proper voltage on in, on installation and on startup, but five years down the road things start happening. So the voltage incoming voltage to the home or the residents can change. So we need to check that out. We need to do that voltage check. Always L one to L two first then S1 to S2, and then look for a fluctuation across S2 yeah, and S3. Yeah, and one of the things I say in my class, because when you open up a Mitsubishi panel, the first board, you, first board you're going to see, not a bird, because if it was a bird in there, that would be a problem. You'd have feathers right, well, we'll all talk over about, the place. No, we'll talk about that in a minute, all right? <laughs> you need, you need Rodents to go to your truck. Birds. <laughs> you need to go to the truck and get a bag of seeds. <laughs> um, but uh, the first board you see is the control board, and on that control board is fuses. Um, you know, it's not always is as clear as you want it to be in the service manual, but sometimes it may say check incoming voltage and kind of in parentheses, it's not there. That also means fuses. So, you know, L1 to L2, S2 to S3, change it to DC, um, uh, excuse me, S2 to S3, uh, then, you know, back to AC and check your fuses, um, no more than three minutes to do all that work. Right. So regard so... We've checked all the voltage, and the voltage looks fine. So what else should we be looking for? Well, we're going to look for rodents and reptiles. Now, you can talk about rodents because yep. you're up north, and I'll yep. talk about reptiles down right. in Florida. So talk to me about reptiles. Okay, so uh, when I first moved to Florida, everyone says reptiles, little lizards, whatever, you, geckos, whatever you call them. And I was like, come on, they can't be that big of a problem. 
Well, they are a big problem, and they get in behind the boards, and they touch the two two correct places. They're going to short out the board. And as I said earlier about stripping that wire, I don't know how many times I've seen between L1, L2, S1, and S2, a nice little rodent, like a little tiny jumper, burnt on that board perfect. And so they were, they're there all the time. It's a big concern. Yeah, and then in my neck of the woods, um, snakes and rats and mice – how in the world do they get inside these units? I mean, uh, because they, they're not small objects, but they always seem to find them themselves in there. And uh, like you said, they always like to lay across high voltage. Well, it's also <laughs> warm in there too, buddy. <laughs> yes. You know, the boards, that's where the warmth is. That's one of the reasons why they're drawn there. But, but you know, working in my New Hampshire days, all right, we used to have field mice eat everything. Eat, at, I don't know, is that wire casing delicious to them? I guess it is. But it's the last meal they had. Yes. Also, we need to be aware of uh, weather conditions. Oh, yeah, big time. Snow, or deep yep. snow. Uh, if any of the wire goes under, wa- under snow, what, uh, snow turns into what when it melts? Um, I would say ice. Ice or water. That's right. So it, it can permeate and create some of those communication breakdowns. And seeing that most of the towns in Florida are on the coast, saltwater corrosion is is rampant. Right. Uh, now, another thing that we mentioned in the new installation side about not having any splices or anything like that or using uh, solderless connectors, you know, what if they use them and things worked on startup and they worked for five years, but now... Things are not working properly. Well, that's actually something I preach in class, too. Is whenever you splice a wire, you know, with a wire nut, solderless connector, you, you, you're you going to have a problem. The, what I can't answer is when you're going to have that problem. So, yeah, even though it's been running for five years, and you know, that problem could have happened a couple times with a cu- customer knew, oh, I'll just go reset it, whatever, it works fine. And then finally, if I'm done resetting it, I'm going to make a phone call. So that's something that's a little bit more difficult because if it's up there in the ceiling in the attic space, you may not be able to get it e- to it easily. But uh, yeah, that could be a concern. Right, I mean, and you gotta you gotta be careful with junction boxes and so forth. And uh, I mean, a loose connection mm-hmm. is just that. Whether yeah. you have a wire nut. Or a solderless connector. That's a loose connection. Yeah, and that's, it eventually going to loosen up and it's going to create problems. And that's going to go back to your preventive maintenance service calls too. Yes. When you get a preventive maintenance call, I mean, those are one of the things I check. You know, as they all should be checked like that. Is just to check the wire connections. You know, are they getting corroded? Are they got any green stuff on them? You know, uh, uh, screws do loosen up over time, and just to reconnect, uh, make sure the power's off. Um, as far as reconnecting those wires. Just tighten them up too much. Don't over-tighten them. But that's something that should be checked all the time. Right. And then we also see fuses. So since you mentioned fuses and mm-hmm. the installation, what you, 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 we've got them here too again. So what are we going to look for? Well, you know, when you're measuring the fuses, a couple different ways of doing it. Um, I typically do it uh, with the unit powered up. I'm looking for no potential drop across the fuse. Um, if you are, you know, you choose to own them, uh, just make sure you isolate, so shut off the system. Uh, that's a little bit more work. Sometimes you got to pull the fuse out. But time, you know, you might add another two minutes to the job, and that's it. So just to make sure that, you know, that fuse is good just by checking it with either your own meter, power it off, or your volt meter, power it on. And the thing, the only thing that is left now is that defective control board. Yeah, yeah things now, don't last forever. Right. And, and the one thing, though, the one thing that we should always look for across S2 and S3 is fluctuation mm-hmm. or bouncing voltage, 12 to 24. So when, whenever there is a problem, and let's say we only see 24 volts DC. But solid stay in there? A solid 24 volts DC. you got a problem. Absolutely. Now, let's say we see 24 volts DC across S2 and S3 on the outer unit. That tells us that we're okay outside because that 24 volts DC signal comes from the outdoor unit. Mm-hmm. So we go on the indoor unit, and if we, if we go to S2 and S3 at the indoor unit, and we don't see 24 volts DC, what's our problem? Yeah, it's going to its place it loves to go. We talked earlier about it's going to ground. Right. It's spliced someplace. Right, at the wire. Mm-hmm. The wire is bad. Yep. But if we do see 24 volts DC at S2 and S3 at the indoor unit, but we're not getting that 12 volts DC return, then that that only uh, leaves us with a bad indoor control board or loose connection. We we can't 
we can't forego the basics. Right. And then we need to look at the connections and all that. So is there anything else we should be looking for in the existing installations? Um, yeah, I'm sure there's other things we could talk about, but uh, that's top pretty of your much head. it. Yeah, we covered it, covered it pretty that's good. That's pretty much one. it. So again, I I hope that these uh, topics are helping our technicians out in the field, and uh, we'll can't wait to do the next episode um, that's coming up. <laughs> All right, we'll <laughs> see you next time. All right, I'll be back. <laughs> uh,